Bien, familia, pues saludos, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? Muy buenas tardes, muy buenas noches. Bienvenidos a esta retransmisión que hace Ibiza Sónica hoy, sábado, día 28 de octubre, desde el club a casa en San Carlos, aquí en la isla de Ibiza, donde hoy vamos a pues, retransmitir un directo muy especial, con un artista muy especial, en formato live, que vamos a estar con Steaming, donde va a estar presentando su nuevo álbum, que salía publicado el mes pasado, el día 29 de septiembre, en el sello... Awesome Soundwave. El álbum se llama Edelberry, acaba de lanzarse, como te digo, a través del sello Awesome Soundwave y ahora está disponible pues, para todos tus oídos en las plataformas más habituales. Bien, con Edelberry el objetivo de Steaming es infundir la energía única que cobra vida cuando se trabaja en la estimulante búsqueda de la inmediatez con completamente hardware, todo lo que, va, todo lo que, todo lo que produce con... con con todo su hardware. Vamos a estar presentando ese álbum, van a estar hablando eh, Mike y Steaming en este directo desde a casa, que como te digo, van a estar presentando tema tras tema, hablando de él, y vamos a estar retransmitiéndolo durante la próxima hora, entre las, eh, pues ahora mismo las diez y media de la noche, hasta las once y media, y después estaremos actuando tanto Steaming, Nikoné y un servidor Carlos Sens, quien va a estar eh, hoy invitado aquí para para realizar el warm-up de dichos grandes artistas. Venga, doy paso a Mike, quien va a estar eh, presentando dicho álbum con Steaming y os doy la bienvenida a esta retransmisión que hace Ibiza Sónica en este live muy especial del nuevo álbum de Steaming llamado Así, Edel Berry, a través del sello Ozone Sign Wave. Doy paso a Mike. For this live broadcast. Over the next hour, we're going to have an exclusive listening session to Stimming's new album, Elderberry, on Cole Cox and Chris Coe's fabulous, awesome Soundwave label. And we're going to explore the music and get an in depth commentary around the sounds and the concept that have come together to make this new long player. But before we start, Martin, <laughs> how are you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, Before we start listening to the music, tell us about the inspiration of the process that you went through in order to create this new piece of work. Yes. Um, yeah, again, thanks for having me. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to be here and to show you my album. Um, it's a pleasure. So the idea of this album is a little bit... Um, <coughs> well, in a moment... In time, wh I'm doing dance music for quite some time. I think I started to 2007 uh, on Dynamic together with Hosh and Solomon. And since then, I was design more or less designing all those tracks inside um, the DAW. And um, I th at, at one point, I realized all the details I made were a little bit of a, not necessarily a waste of time, but maybe too much. So instead of um, going for the very last detail, I tried to um, capture the energy that um, appears when you have a working system hardware only. So my yeah. goal was to make a hardware only album. Yeah, and do you know what? I think that leads it quite nicely because I was going to ask you, how does this new album differ to your previous releases? Yeah, in, in a way it's a very radical approach because I really w w um, worked hardware only without a computer and the whole process. I think it also was a pandemic thing because I needed to uh, to be at home and um, I did uh, most of the tracks I actually made on in ears and at home yeah. in like one of the rooms w we we have for that and. <coughs> So it's um, it's quite a radical approach, I have to yeah. say. Yeah, I was going to say this new approach of doing it. Do you feel that it breaks the constraints of being locked into a formula? Like when you're doing it this way, you're free to explore and go in whatever direction you see fit. Well, it has two sides. On the one hand, it's um, nowadays dance music is very much designed into its its uh, into its last job. I mean, th it's sometimes I feel like it's you're in the um, someone is telling you when to dance, when to put your hands up, when where's the drop? Here's the riser, um, and when you are hardware only, it's like practically it's not possible to work that way. So mm -hmm. it really is about like chasing that energy and not so much that drop. Yeah. Um, and also, I was going to say, it's well documented that 
you'd like to experiment with pound signs, fill signs, and as you said, yes. experiment with different ways of uh, making music. What role do these techniques play in the recording of this new album? So, building a groove is one thing, right? Actually, very many machines out there can pay, yeah. can can build a groove. Um, start with the Roland Tier Eight, and it's like the most classic, most standard groove. That's going to work. But the question is, what element do I need to still make it um, 21st century? I mean, we're in 2023, right? So, you need some something very interesting to put on the table, texture-wise. And my secret weapon for that was the, it's not secret anymore, <laughs> as of right now, <laughs> just told was, now. was the Tasty <laughs> Chips uh, GR1. It's a granular synthesis. Yeah. yeah. And into this granular synthesizer, I loaded a lot of field recordings that I made myself. Um, because in a, in, in a very abstract way, the granular synth does this modern texture that is needed. And also, I figured, because it has this one fader underneath the display, um, yeah. if I get a right spot, this is actually my riser very often. Right. So, I was going to say, it's released on Awesome Soundwave. Correct. Um, we all know Carl and Christopher. Um, how, did it, how did you manage to get this one? Because previously you've released on labels like Dynamic and other amazing underground labels and Awesome sound wave. They've had a great, they've had a great heritage with the label, and the mm -hmm. fact that they're pushing new artists, especially with a live concept. Uh, that's that's the point. Um, when I realized they focus on at least they have the vision, uh, they ha they have a future vision of electronic music and how techno could happen. Um, I, I really like, I, I very much like that. I'm pretty sure. Um, the the fact that they focus on live artists was the the point for me where I said okay that's going to be it yeah for sure okay so actually you know what go on the, tell the, me uh, the, the the whole story is Carl Cox bought one of my devices yeah the AMC and that's how I um, I was connected to Christopher because he's the uh, also the technician for Carl Cox mm. and. Um, he bought it, and I sent one one of the devices to Australia, and I was like, mm, who's that guy? Okay, for Kai Cox, okay, all right. What are they doing? Oh, they're having this label. Oh, they focus on life. Wait, Kai Cox is using my machine on his hybrid, hybrid life set? I should send them music, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the rest cool. is history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, okay, let's, uh, let's start and have a listen. I think what we should do is just go through the tracks. Oh, sounds great. So the first track is Morgenthau. You know what Morgenthau is? Um, in the in the morning in nature, there's this um, drops. I don't know the English name. Dew, 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 mildew. It's like the drops, like mist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the mist. Morning the mist. Morning mist. That's the one. Thank you. 
So whilst that was playing, we just had a little conversation about the sounds yeah, and you explained the actual, ele the actual elements. I think yeah. it was just three devices, but no, I'm 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 smiling because I remember in in original the the jam that I recorded was maybe ten minutes. I was sitting there stoned, like oh, it's so beautiful, <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. In the end, it's like a one and a half minute track because. After what I did afterwards, of course, yeah. was like uh, cutting it down to something, yeah, what can I say, like modern, there needs to happen yeah. stuff, and there's yeah. no, no so much room for useless, beautiful textures, yeah. unfortunately. But it's setting the tone for what we're now going to hear for the rest of the album. This oh yeah, is the, totally. You know, yeah. the opening scene. Yeah. So um, let's move on to track number two, Sandworm. The Sandworm. Sandworm, Sandworm, yeah, I think it's uh, from June. <laughs> Sónica en directo, escuchando la presentación y la conversación de Mick Wilson junto con Steaming, quien está presentando hoy en la casa su nuevo álbum salido recientemente a través del sello Awesome Soundwave. Seño en el que el propietario estuvo actuando recientemente aquí en la casa, estuvo haciendo un live en formato modular y y que nos contaban que este sello está enfocado a toda la gente o artistas que hacen lives y vienen aquí a casa para probar el sound system de a casa que es espectacular llamado The Sound quien viene a probar eh, o van a pasar por aquí seguramente pues un montón de artistas en formato live para probar eh, sus nuevos materiales, sus nuevos releases o sus nuevos álbumes con este sonido Álbum que, por cierto, vuelvo a repetirte que ya puedes encontrar en tu plataforma habitual, llamado Edelberry. Y enfocado en ese objetivo, infundirle la energía única que cobra vida cuando se trabaja únicamente con hardware. Artista que ha estado inmerso durante años en la exploración de nuevos sonidos, el... El mismo Steaming presentaba también hace unos años un sonido 4D para los clubs. Y bueno, tengo que decir que estamos aquí en la casa con, con Mick Wilson y con Steaming presentando ese nuevo álbum. Y madre mía, qué pasada como suena de bien, ¿eh? Venga, seguimos en directo. Son las 10.54 minutos y Sónica te lo cuenta tanto en formato audio como en vídeo. <risa> Like, like what happens now 
is a good example of this live approach yeah. because in a computer you you would have done this perfectly like everything would be on time in shape but here it really is like a life i'm tweaking it in the moment so it's not perfect do you know uh, i was going to say for me when i was having a listen privately and i was uh -huh. taking my notes I was like, interesting sounds interspersed with some wonky analog warblings. Yeah, it's one of my pe personal favourites, as I record Thank on you. the album. Thank you. And then the groove has this tribal hypnotic feel to it as well. It just draws you in. Yes. Mm. Um, for some reason, this is like the, the beginning of m me um, using a 303 type of sound, like an acid. Yeah type of sound. For 15 years I hesitated using it because I, I don't know, it, and so many people already did it. Um, but here I thought like, okay, I need, I need this drive, I need this um, drawing in type of yeah. loop energy. Yeah. yeah. And also, as you said there, this feel of that record, the way it moves, the groove, you wouldn't be able to capture that if it was done on a computer. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's not like, it's just actually, I just found for myself, I feel much more comfortable in doing dance or, or, um, focused on the energy. Yeah. And I'm doing all this left field stuff in the DAW. Yeah. Um, but maybe we talk about that later. Um, the next track, Golden Tree. I don't know if there's some gamers out there. In the very first level of Elden Ring, there's this very beautiful Golden Tree. And I have to admit, I didn't play it any further because it's not my type of game. Yeah. I just, I don't like the setting. I don't like this die all the time stuff. But this golden tree was so um, impressive that I thought, oh, this sounds a little bit like that. Yeah, and I was going to say, how does that, you know, it's a bit more, there's a deep, dark groove to golden tree. Some, a lot of ephemeral sounds. Yeah, it's I, I think it's one of the, the um, most stand out tracks in terms of integrity, sound design. Also, there's this break with the um, with the bass. And I have to admit, this is the only track where I did some more of a heavy editing afterwards. Not too much, still. Yeah. The, the basic is still hardware. But this um, bass line break and stuff comes um, from the DAW. Let's have a listen to this then. I'm looking forward. <laughs>
track where the OP1, this, where is that main camera? Well, this one is making the groove, because it's not, not so much like a groove beast, but here the doom, 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 is just like one pattern. Of our machine on itself, yeah. yeah. And I've got to say, for the people who are catching this at home, you, you need to hear it on this system here to catch the it. system something is amazing. Else. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've listened to it at home, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy that home listening experience, but hearing it on this system now just brings a different dimension to what I was listening to earlier. Yeah, the intensity is really, really impressive. I have to say, it's also the first time for me listening um, to the system. Christopher told me that Akasha has like one of the best sound system he ever heard. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's true. It's, yeah, it's, it's quite it's true. It's something yeah, special, it's isn't good. it? Yeah. It's a golden tree. The golden tree, yeah. This is like... There's so this much glitter later yeah, on. Yeah, this is a dance floor experience. This is like, you know, you felt the energy there on this one. I think so, yeah. Yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. definitely. It was I already, I played it a couple of times. It works quite nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the bass, like, whoa. It's it's always, whoa. Yeah. It goes deep. It does, it mm. does. So, after, we've, we've listened to three tracks now. We're moving on to the fourth. Mm -hmm. and it's time to refresh the palette. Here's something slightly different. Yeah, just as we uh, as we said earlier, it, it's something to refresh your taste buds, yeah. to kind of some fresh air, no groove, just mm -hmm. tasty. No so eat. I think tasty is the tasty chips GR1. That's the one no so eat is the um, is a very very strange French synthesizer based on an Arduino board. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's. Um, Nozoid OCS minus two. It's a very strange synthesizer. Maybe one of the strangest mm, from the last say, ten sounds years. Sounds like a very one of these niche. A very one niche. I'm not sure how many how, how many units he actually sold, um, but this synthesizer is doing all the acid tones yeah. in the whole album, basically. Okay, let's listen to this now. <laughs> Complexity of this, it, it's all the, the GR1, it's granular synthesis. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And this this track, um, Tasty Nozoid, have I said it correctly? T Say it again. Tasty Nozoid. Yeah. It's, as I said, it gives you some headspace. I think so. It yeah. refreshes your taste buds. It's something um, to take a breath because from now on we're doing. Serious techno, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know, we talk about techno, and I was going to say that, do you think that the sound that you've created on this has given a dimension to techno and underground music? Because we, we used to be normal techno, the four to the floor, the intense drilling, drilling, drilling. There's a lot of movement. 
that we're hearing so far within the tracks that we've listened to so far? <coughs> well, uh, this is something um, others have to judge, I'm af <laughs> I think. You know, it's like I, I cannot... Um, I just do my best, yeah. And uh, at the moment, your best is doing very well. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Indeed. So, okay, we move on to the seeker. The seeker. Imagine a robot from a sci fi movie that is seeking someone. cuando son las 11, 8 minutos en esta retransmisión que hace Sónica desde el club a casa en Las Dalias donde nos encontramos con Steaming en conversación en chat presentándonos tema tras tema y analizando y explicando pues eh, lo que viene siendo la creación de un álbum enfocado únicamente en, en hardware Seguimos recordándote el nombre del nuevo álbum que salía publicado el pasado 29 de septiembre a través del sello Awesome Sound Waves. Álbum llamado Edel Berry. Seguimos con Steven en directo desde el club Akasha. see in the live stream but um, I, ju I just um, told him that um, all the tracks we heard and we hear were basically made with this uh, with these hardware setup it's the this one as the main um, sequencing and drum spitting out machine this is the mixer and then I just had like different devices around it um, 
And I, I felt like a little boy playing around with toys. Having like, fun. oh, yeah, <laughs> this is cool. Oh, this is nice. And if, okay, now I can go crazy. Yeah. And my wife told me, yeah, I hear you stomping <laughs> in the next room. <laughs> she, knows, she knew you were cooking up something good. Um, I, I think in my notes I put that down as a burst of energy to really re-invitalize re you on that one. Yes, yes, mm. totally. Um, yeah, the seeker. It's the Mook grandmother. This it's whilst it's raw, there's still yeah. a smoothness. Yeah, that's the, the Mook sound. sound. That's you typically know. Mook. It's yeah. Mook. Yeah, yeah, Mook. Sorry. Mook. <laughs> yeah, it's good job. So now we're moving into. We get a chance to hear some of the intricate sounds playing with the next tracks. We, we sort of have gone through through a, through a journey. Mm -hmm. of the sounds, the raw sounds. Now it starts to get very intricate. There's a lot of detail in this next, mm -hmm. which is Sela and Typhoon. Sela and Typhoon, yeah. Sela is my piano, the one that I grew up on. Yeah. I think my parents bought it when I was like seven or eight years old, and yeah. now it's in my studio, and I'm, um, I'm very proud of still having it, and mm -hmm. also some very good piano players played on yeah. it. Um, and I think I just m used some tones that I delayed with a granular engine here. But I think more interesting for me in this track is the, um, is the bass line, which is so minimal and simple, but especially because of that, it creates an energy that is very, that, that is something that I seek, actually. Yeah. But there's a lot of space in there. As I said, to these sounds are dancing around oh and yeah, we're listening mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. It's um, it fr German frickelig. Um, <laughs> um, There's a lot of difference between yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot. Uh, yeah. mm. So a very um, tiny, but many of them um, percussions yeah. around a very raw, basic bass drum, bass mm. line. It's combination. As I said, it's complex, but there's a simplicity to it as yes. well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A very simple, basic with a complex. Over yeah. built. I think I think they want to hear it. Shall we? Yeah, le <laughs> let's. <laughs> pasión y sin ilusión pues eh, el trabajo que ha, que ha realizado detrás de este último y nuevo álbum salido a través del sello Ozone Sun Wave y como te decía hoy probándolo y testeándolo aquí en el sonido de Akasha considerado uno de los mejores sonidos eh, hoy en día sobre todo de la isla y de muchos lugares donde como te comentaba antes el dueño del sello Ozone Sun Wave eh, vino a realizar un live aquí a casa fue quien realmente propuso a Steaming eh, como para presentar su álbum aquí y para que testeara su nuevo álbum con este nuevo sonido seguimos escuchando a Steaming junto con Mick Wilson presentando este nuevo álbum llamado Edelberry
just thought like this is one of the um, um, like the downsides of the live play because I wasn't able to raise up the, the attention again. Somehow I felt like I start here and then I just I decay, yeah, and I wasn't able to get to the attack phase again. those sounds in the sound stage just I think it's like the deepest track on the whole album it's really you need the big sound system you need a good subwoofer you need to be um, stoned in the right <laughs> balance <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gonna and then it opens <laughs> up yeah not too much yeah, that's important it grabs you and captures you yeah. um, and now we're on to track number seven people do people do what um, people do the same things and expect change. Profound. And the string stab from the original track, which is called Change of Mine, um, Lazarus Man was doing the vocals. I just t took one string stab and made something new out of it. So I thought I should call the track People Do, because it's the, the first <laughs> thing. It's so important, <laughs> I mean. Well, let's. Let's hear it. Yeah, let's yeah, hear it. Okay. Uh, is this so one of the longer ones? Um, no, it's uh, um, no, no, no. It's not that long. No. Okay. It's four minutes <laughs> twenty nine seconds. Because we got some long ones. Uh, on I got album. one very yeah, long yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Ricardo Villalobos is uh, was looking after or, or yeah. lo <laughs> looking at the back <laughs> of my head on that one. No, no. People do. Um, if you hear the track change, then you immediately recognize that one stab sound yeah. that I reused here. Okay. Thank you. 
There's no, no shaker or higher. It's just this little percussion thing. But there's still movement in the groove with the yeah. some sounds. Yeah. I, I, I didn't use a hi hat here. I'm proud of me. Again, it's a deep dark groover, but there's always interest as it plays through the track. So as you just said, there's no hi-hat there, no, no intentional, but no. you can still hear. There are high frequencies, but yeah. not classic ones. It's just those click, click. Oh, by the way, I think at the end of this track, there's like, um, for everyone out there who's making music uh, his, on his own. Yeah, so those, those elements were how I made the groove, actually. It's, I can, this, the last one, um, this is the, the main percussion line from the whole track. So um, steal it. That's Use a gift. it on your own. A gift, a gift to the listener. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. It's a gift for the listeners. Thank you. So, defam on the field. Defam. Defam on the field. Defam. You know what the defam Moog. is? Moog. Oh, yeah. Ah, you know. Moog. Okay. You know how it's called in the long, um, the long name? Drummer from, from another, another mother. 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 Yeah. yeah. So there's the grandmother, there's the drummer from another mother, there's the patriarch, I think, mm. right? The mat yeah, yeah. Yes. There's also yeah. the mother 32, That's so right. Moog mm. is doing their own thing. Actually, what I like the most is the Moga Fogger pedal. Oh, the pedals. I think it's such a good name. It's, uh, I really love that That's name. That's a classic Moga, Moga Fogger. Fogger. Yeah. <laughs> Just the way you say it as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the longest one, and um, I found a trick on the DFAM, uh, which goes, um, you trigger it with the machine, but the internal clock goes differently, so it will never repeat itself. It kind of spits out um, uh, um, percussions that will never repeat itself. So it's constantly random, constantly it's moving. Uh, not random, random is the wrong word, but it's um, there's like another time... Um, level that is implemented and right. this makes it very organic yeah. and new every time. Okay, we want to hear this one as well.
so that's break number one. I'm more proud of the second break, actually. But we have some time. Up okay, until then. we have. <laughs> we have some time. <laughs> Always feels like a track of two halves as it starts developing and moving and constantly grooving and redeveloping. Yeah, in the second one, I, I, I really allow the groove to fall into it, it to fall into pieces. Yeah, but not now. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, once again, this this track to me has that feel of a tribal hypnotic. It's almost putting you into a trance. Totally, and that's exactly the energy I was chasing. I was looking for while doing this album. I was looking for a, uh, for an um, hypnotic type of energy that draws you in, not. Um, a type of energy that tells you when you have to go crazy yeah. and yeah, it's something. It it it's it's a little bit of an old school type of techno thinking. That techno where you needed to do something on your own to dance on your own to get to a state where something magic happens and not the speakers letting you tell what you have to do. Yeah, as I said, it reminds me of this sort of like the ancient traditions when you're on the. No, yeah, totally, feeling. absolutely. I think it's like one of the, the, the basic tribes of music and humankind, this type of energy. And um, th thanks for telling me yeah. that I found a little bit of that <laughs> energy here. Indeed. And, um, okay, she hates that chord. She hates that chord. It's Why? my, uh, my Why? wife. It's my <laughs> wife. She hates that type of sound. I have to admit it. And I like it. So every time I do a track with that type of stab, yeah. she's like, nah. And I'm like, oh. That was my only question. I was going to say, why? <laughs>
I tried to put this piano in, into the groove, but I wasn't able to. I destroyed it, so I thought I keep it pure. <laughs> it's a nice way to close out. <laughs> 